Chapter 4, Writing Business Messages Martin Shovel and other successful communicators will tell you that audiences tend to greet incoming messages with a selfish question. What's in this for me? If your target readers or listeners don't think a message applies to them, or they don't think you are being sensitive to their needs, they won't pay attention. You can improve your audience sensitivity by adopting the you attitude, maintaining good standards of etiquette, emphasizing the positive, and using bias-free language. You are already becoming familiar with the audience-centered approach, trying to see a subject through your audience's eyes. Now you want to project this approach in your messages by adopting the you attitude, that is, by speaking and writing in terms of your audience's wishes, interests, hopes, and preferences. On a simple level, you can adopt the you attitude by replacing terms that refer to yourself and your company with terms that refer to your audience. In other words, use you and your instead of I, me, mine, we, us, and ours. Good etiquette shows respect for your audience and helps foster a more successful environment for communication by minimizing negative emotional reaction. Some situations naturally require more diplomacy than others. If you know your audience well, a less formal approach might be more appropriate. However, when you are communicating with people who outrank you or with people outside your organization, an added measure of courtesy is usually needed. Written communication and most forms of electronic media generally require more tact than oral communication. When you're speaking, you can soften your words by your tone of voice and facial expressions. Plus, you can adjust your approach according to the feedback you get. You will encounter situations throughout your career in which you need to convey unwanted news. However, sensitive communicators understand the difference between delivering negative news and being negative. Never try to hide the negative news, but look for positive points that will foster a good relationship with your audience. Bias-free language avoids words and phrases that unfairly and even unethically categorize or stigmatize people in ways related to gender, race, ethnicity, age, disability, or other personal characteristics. Contrary to what some might think, biased language is not simply about labels. To a significant degree, language reflects the way people think and what they believe, and biased language may well perpetuate the underlying stereotypes and prejudices that it re represents. To establish a good relationship with your audience, you must also appear to be fair. Good communicators make every effort to change biased language. Bias can take a variety of forms, such as gender bias, racial and ethnic bias, age bias, disability bias. Successful communication relies on a positive relationship between sender and receiver. Establishing your credibility and projecting your company's image are two vital steps in building and fostering positive business relationships. Audience responses to your messages depend heavily on your credibility, which is a measure of your believability and is based on how reliable you are and how much trust you, you evoke in others. With audiences who don't know you and trust you already, you need to establish credibility before they'll accept your messages. On the other hand, when you do establish credibility, communication becomes much easier because you no longer have to spend time and energy convincing people that you are a trustworthy source of information and ideas. To build, maintain, or repair your credibility, emphasize the following characteristics. Honesty, objectivity, awareness of audience needs, credentials, knowledge, and expertise, endorsements, performance, confidence, sincerity. Be aware that credibility can take days, months, even years to establish, and it can be wiped out in an instant. An occasional mistake or letdown may be forgiven, 
but major lapses in honesty or integrity can destroy your reputation. When you communicate with anyone outside your organization, it is more than a conversation between two individuals. You represent your company and therefore play a vital role in helping the company build and maintain positive relationships with all of its stakeholders. Most successful companies work hard to foster a specific public image and your external communication efforts need to project that image. As part of this responsibility, the interests and preferred communication style of your company must take precedence over your own views and personal communication style. Your communication style involves the choices you make to express yourself, the words you select, the manner in which you use those words and sentences, and the way you build paragraphs from individual sentences. Your style creates a certain tone or overall impression in your messages. The right tone depends on the nature of your message and your relationship with the reader. The tone of your business messages can range from informal to conversational to formal. If you're in a large organization and you're communicating with your superiors or with customers, the right tone will usually be more formal and respectful. However, that same tone might sound distant and cold in a small organization or if used with close colleagues. Part of the challenge of communicating on the job is to read each situation and figure out the appropriate tone to use. An important aspect of creating a conversational tone is using plain language. Plain language presents information in a simple, unadorned style that allows your audience to easily grasp your meaning. Language that recipients can read, understand, and act upon the first time they read it. You can see how this definition supports using the you attitude and shows respect for your audience. In addition, Plain language can make companies more productive and more profitable because people spend less time trying to figure out messages that are confusing or aren't written to meet their needs. The choice of active or passive voice also affects the tone of your message. In a sentence written in the active voice, the subject performs the action and the object receives the action. For example, Jody sent the email message. In a sentence written in the passive voice, the subject receives the action. For example, the email message was sent by Jody. As you can see, the passive voice combines the helping verb to be with a form of the verb that is usually similar to the past tense. Using the active voice often makes your writing more direct, livelier, and easier to read. Passive voice is not wrong grammatically, but it can be cumbersome, lengthy, and vague. In most cases, the active voice is the better choice. After you have decided how to adapt to your audience, you're ready to begin composing your message. As you write your first draft, let your creativity flow. Don't try to draft and edit at the same time or worry about getting everything perfect. You may find it helpful to hone your craft by viewing your writing at three levels. Strong words, effective sentences, and coherent paragraphs. The nouns in your business messages can vary dramatically in their degree of abstraction or concreteness. An abstract word expresses a concept, quality, or characteristic. Abstractions are usually broad, encompassing a category of ideas and are often intellectual, academic, or philosophical. Love, honor, progress, tradition, and beauty are abstractions, as are such important business comp concepts as productivity, profits, quality, and motivation. In contrast, a concrete word stands for something you could touch, see, or visualize. Most concrete terms are anchored in the tangible, material world. Chair, table, horse, rose, kick, kiss, red, green, and two are concrete words. They are direct, clear, and exact. When you compose business messages, look for the most powerful words for each situation. Choose strong, precise words. Choose familiar words. Avoid cliches and use buzzwords carefully. Use jargon carefully. Arranging your carefully chosen words in effective sentences is the next step in creating successful messages. 
Start by selecting the best type of sentence to communicate each point you want to make. Sentences come in four basic varieties, simple, compound, complex, and compound complex. A simple sentence has one main clause, although it may be expanded by nouns and pronouns serving as objects of the action and by modifying phrases. A compound sentence has two main clauses that express two or more independent but related thoughts of equal importance, usually joined by and, but, or, or. In effect, a compound sentence is a merger of two or more simple sentences that are related. A complex sentence expresses one main thought and one or more subordinate thoughts related to it, often separated by a comma. The subordinate thought could not stand alone. A compound complex sentence has two main clauses, at least one of which contains a subordinate clause. To make your writing as effective as possible, Strive for variety and balance using all four sentence types. In every message, some ideas are more important than others. You can emphasize key ideas through your sentence style. One obvious technique is to give important points the most space. When you want to call attention to a thought, use extra words to describe it. Paragraphs organize sentences related to the same general topic. Readers expect every paragraph to be unified, focusing on a single topic, and coherent, presenting ideas in a logically connected way. By carefully arranging the elements of each paragraph, you help your readers grasp the main idea of your document and understand how the specific pieces of support material back up that idea. Paragraphs vary widely in length and form, but most contain three basic elements. A topic sentence, support sentences that develop the topic, and transitional words and phrases. Most effective paragraphs deal with a single topic, and the sentence that introduces that topic is called the topic sentence. This sentence, usually the first one in the paragraph, gives readers a summary of the general idea that will be covered in the rest of the paragraph. In most paragraphs, the topic sentence needs to be explained, justified, or extended with one or more support sentences. These sentences must be related to the topic and provide examples, evidence, and clarification. Transitions connect ideas by showing how one thought is related to another. They also help alert the reader to what lies ahead so that shifts and changes don't cause confusion. In addition to helping readers understand the connections you're trying to make, Transitions give your writing a smooth, even flow. You have a variety of options for developing paragraphs, each of which can convey a type of idea. Five of the most common approaches are illustration, comparison or contrast, cause and effect, classification, and problem and solution. Be sure to take advantage of all the software tools at your disposal to write more efficiently and effectively. The features, functions, and names vary from system to system and version to version, but you'll encounter some combination of the following capabilities. Style sheets, style sets, and themes, boilerplate and document components, autocorrection and autocompletion, file merge and mail merge, Endnotes, footnotes, indexes, and table of contents.